everybody welcome back to the last of group b for the season we're going to be having purge versus divine and i'm joined by the lovely junico how are you two doing today well rue we are just fantastic fantastic all right i'm done bye <laughs> <laughs> already done uh, it's not even we're not even the first game guys come on i think the important question important question is how is chat doing today and are we super hyped yes. to watch purge versus divine hell yeah I'm super excited. Again, um, this actually does matter because if for some reason Divine loses, again, Divine being in the top of their bracket, if Divine loses, they lose their first place, I think, to Monarchy, if I remember oh, correctly. Oh, wow. I believe that be that's how that works. Quite a turn of events. I am so excited to watch this and mm -hmm. see what this brings. I think this is going to be a crazy matchup. I think it's going to be for excellent games to watch i i am so hyped i'm so hyped oh yeah most definitely i am i'm pretty excited i will say uh it's gonna be a bit of a slog fest because we are going i believe straight to wreckers yard right off the bat Oof. and every day every right. game i see on wreckers yard is just absolutely brutal that is a hundred percent true there's a lot that the survivors can work with there's a lot that the killers can work with mm -hmm. They always seem to be kind of lengthy matches, but usually there's a couple of good surprises for us. I would tend to agree. And I, 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 my opinion over the past couple of months has shifted. For the longest time, I was like, you know, Cold Tower is pretty balanced. But ever since they put in those breakable doors, I'm beginning to feel like more and more that Wrecker's Yard is more balanced than Cold Tower. And that, that might be a bit incorrect. I, I'm not sure. But that map doesn't actually feel as big as it says it is on paper, because there's really nothing on the outside of that map. There's like an entire just dead zone perimeter around the very edge of that map that's just not there. Where on other maps, the tiles tend to extend right against the wall for the most part. So I don't know. Uh, my, my opinion's a bit shifted. What do you guys think? Uh, I, 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 I don't play, I haven't played Coal Tower or Wrecker's Yard as killer mm. enough to kind of have a, a, a sense of which I think is kind of more balanced. Um, I also, you know, we're still getting used to playing killers, so we're not at a high enough level that stopping to break doors is, like, that detrimental to our gameplay, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, but I really like both of those maps. I think that yeah. they are both, like, I feel like when I load in on either of those maps as killer or survivor, I'm like, okay, I got a shot at this. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, this can go either way. Um no, absolutely. Yeah, I guess that's, that's my feeling. Yeah, the only <laughs> thing that I will say about Coal Tower that does make it feel a little bit more, <laughs> no pun intended, balanced, is that you actually do have a constant drop-off point for balanced landing. Yes. Which is not... That yes. is true. Whereas, like, what is it, uh, Wrecker's Yard? 
I believe has a hill, but I, I genuinely want to say there have been times where I've got that map where I don't think a hill spawned. That might be incorrect. There might always be a hill that spawns you mean, somewhere. I feel like there's always a hill because it's either down by Shack or it's at the coal tower. No, I mean, I mean not 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 on coal tower. I mean just no on record. records yard. Oh, yeah. There, there there does tend to be a hill somewhere on coal tower as well generally i don't remember if i've ever spawned to the map without there being one but i believe on wreckers yard there has been a time or two it chat you can't remember have you ever been on wreckers yard and there wasn't a it wasn't a hill is it like is it like like hindsight bias like am i looking back and i just don't remember it being there like i'm really curious but i can't think of a time when i've loaded in there and there wasn't one but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened that's fair that's fair and with that said, we are going to be loading into our first match here shortly. Again, Purge will be killing with the artist this time on Wrecker's Yard for us. And Divine will be replying with Twins. So interesting choices from these guys. I, I actually think Twins is really good on this map. I'm surprised at Artist, but I guess we'll just have to see if they play the Artist. And they chat, are relatively if we new. Get, we get some excellent hype for both of the teams today. This is going to be a really good match. Yes, it will. Oh yeah, I'm super excited for it. And as you see there, yeah, they do find a survivor, it looks like, almost immediately. And that's what I love about this killer is that they can scout at the beginning and tell where exactly anybody is. Again, they all spawn together. So if you find one, you tend to find everybody. Seems like they just found the ace though. Yeah, I didn't catch, I didn't catch sight on of anybody else. So they either split up quickly or they're doing some big stealth. Either way, probably a good plan. Oh! oh. Yeah. And they are going to take the Crow and the M1 at that pallet. So an early hit on this ace, and I don't know if they're going to be able to get away. Yeah, they're going to go down almost oh. immediately there. Very that is early a hit. Very fast down. And I don't imagine they've even gotten much progress at all on any generators at this point. And you see that they were about to go for the basement hook there, but then they saw someone running through Shack, so they changed their mind, which I think was not a bad idea. Yeah, the, from where they picked up, I think the killer realized that if that survivor was to take a hit, they would not get that basement hook, and so they wisely went away. However, they do know where most of the survivors are at this point. Again, the corrupt zone still about 30 seconds up, and they've got their first hook. They can just wait this out for a while. That's a super early down. I also uh, want to point out for anyone who is not super familiar with artist add-ons that they are running the severed hands, which is what we've been seeing oh. for pretty much all of the artist gameplay, right? So that's uh, survivors who are near other survivors and they are swarmed. They all become swarmed, mm -hmm. but they are also running one that I'm, I'm not sure if we've seen yet, uh, Matthias Baby Shoes, which uh, the auras of any survivors within five meters of an idle dire crow are revealed to you, which makes looping so much more difficult for these survivors because it's essentially wall hacking. Uh, ah, so they're going to have to be really clever with how they play this. I don't know if they're going to be able to get the unhook here as that is just about to go here. They're going to be trying to go back and forth and they do actually get the unhook before the final stage. And I will say that one thing that, about the add-ons that is a bit different is that usually we see some kind of cooldown add-on for the crows. Mm -hmm. So that way the uh, artist can, you know, try and follow it up after you know immediately setting a crow wait for that cooldown to stop and then go back and follow it up but it doesn't seem to be the case where they're using it for information and that is the first there is an aura from that gen that means you know what that means it means that they're running that perk that's everyone's favorite that everyone's been running it's deadlock everybody oh no i was talking about wow. rancor it's rancor everybody <laughs> you, you are correct there was a gen that was blocked it's 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 rancor everybody forget what i no you said deadlock rue oh okay i'm sorry that's my bad i'm so sorry and yeah noting, thank you you know you to strike from this ace oh and there's that add-on right there spreading the crows out this could be a bit of a shotgun effect here from free uh some free health states no i'm not quite yeah it. i was and i was just about to uh question whether or not I, uh, you thought that running the severed hands was a particularly helpful add-on because every time we've seen the artist play, mm -hmm. I'm not sure we've seen it get a ton of value. So I was sort of beginning to think, well, maybe that maybe a cooldown add-on would have been more beneficial, but that's certainly, that was certainly some value they got, some good information, so. I think that's the biggest thing is that it, if there is a, someone nearby, it will give you that information. And that's what we what this artist is playing for is just really a lot of information. 
And uh, oh, they do get the hit there on the Lori, so Lori is gonna have to be a bit careful. And this survivor is almost dead. I have not seen a kinship proc from this ace yet. And yeah, they're gonna wait for the camp and they're gonna camp us out to completion here. So it, uh, the, uh, that early down and hook led to a very quick tunnel and this survivor is already out of the game at three gens up. Yeah, this, this killer has done an excellent job of taking one good down and capitalizing it uh, mm -hmm. to the best of their ability. They've got somewhat injured. They have, they basically know where all three of them are. Uh, and, uh, oh, that was blood right there. Yeah, it was. That was from the ace dying. If for some reason there is a physics issue where the blood from the survivor in the basement will show up uh, on whatever level of geometry there is. Oh, really? It's, the blood physics in this game are super weird. Like if you're carrying someone to basement, the blood will still, it, blood, has a tr blood has trouble tracking where it should be, so. It's weird. No. Um, and third gen going for this. So these survivors are wasting no time. And this shit has a decent amount of progress. And also worth noting, that's not the gen that Lori was on this entire time. So they have been split up on these gens the whole time. I'm seeing exactly what they should be doing. And so now it's just a matter of, can the artist get another hook before, you know, the end game here? Can they find another hook to try and get someone camped out? And they do get the down on the fang. They do. They'd be careful though. There was a survivor in this area. Oh, but they're not gonna they be able to get this get in time. That. Oh. So close. I'm surprised that they. I'm surprised that they went for that even because that they were not close enough to to make that happen. I mean, you never know until you try, and yeah, it's fair. They might have noticed in high but... No, you, you, you kind of know. I mean, like when when you've oh. played Survivor long enough, you start to get a really good sense of oh, I make that, or oh god, I definitely don't make that, or I have to vault this window because I don't have a choice, but I'm literally going to go down on the other side. Mm -hmm. So interestingly enough. We know that Lori popped that gen, and they do not pursue the injured Lori. I know that they've got a little bit of time before that deadlock expires, but knowing where that Lori was, I might have gone for it, but I get it too. If you can camp it out to second stage and then follow up and try and get another fresh hook, that's gonna be potentially seven to eight stage 2K that you're looking at here for this killer. And yeah, look at this, look at how many artists this, like, look at how many crows this artist is throwing out. Well, not to mention with Rancor up, you know, as soon as that last gen pops, there's an additional pressure on the survivors to keep the Dwight safe. And sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes Rancor can kind of cloud your vision a little bit and cause you to make less good choices because you're so concerned about keeping up, keeping your obsession uh, up and healthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'll be interested to see how that plays out as well. And maybe that's sort of what they're banking on a little bit. It could be. And there you have it yeah they went to second stage and they're gonna be uh leaving after getting those two stages on the fang and going after someone else looks like they're zoning this lorry here and she's gonna take a hit and go into the corner of the map i don't think this lorry can get away from here i don't, I don't know if they've got so a pallet. either i didn't see one over here i think dead heart saves them that's it yeah they do have the dead heart though that gives them a little bit of extra time on the loop but keep in mind that add-on that's the aura seeing one is really gonna come into play here yeah, and there you have it. Like you said, they will read Ace that. Was able to, or Dwight was, is it Ace or Dwight? It's Dwight. Dwight. It's Dwight. Was able to get Fang off, so. True. And they did reset. However, Fang is still injured. I imagine there might be resilience. I'm not sure, but this will be a fresh hook on the lorry. So oh. they have hooked three different survivors now. This is now a very sketchy situation because mm -hmm. if Fang pops that generator, Dwight is screwed. True. Dwight is in a bad, bad, bad way. Uh, and I think they're well aware of it. Yeah, I imagine, hopefully they're telling them, please don't pop that yet, but. I mean, you gotta get the gens done at some point, even if you get a two out here. Obviously you can hide, the problem is, is that they want to try and get them out and not get uh, too many stages on the lore here, but they may just have to take the, uh, take the L here as one of your survivors will not be able to go for the unhook. The yeah. other one is injured. You might just have to take the two out and give the give the killer a, a multi, you know, more than six stage two K. Oh, they see scratch oh, marks over here. here, though. Yeah, they need to be very Dwight. careful. They need to wait for the save to either happen or oh, they will oh. get the save though. And I imagine they're gonna pop this in any second here. And I have a feeling that Dwight is the one that has BT because Dwight got that rescue on the ace earlier. Notice and no scratch marks, I think, from the Dwight. Dwight might have lucky break. Nope, never mind. Another no, thing do. worth considering 
is does Lori have DS? Because if she downs Lori, gets DS, obsession switches. True. Yes, it does. Which means that Rancor, the object would no longer be the Dwight. It would be the Lori. But it looks like she's not going to go for it. Yeah, she just keeps. Oh my goodness. Both of those survivors are on that gen. They're committing to it. Might be oh, trying to get boy. some extra health states here. Oh, that was such a close shot. Yeah, that was a really well timed save on the Lori. That gen's almost ready to pop, too. This is really close. This is really good. <laughs> This is super tense. Oh no, she got stuck on the, the, the scaffolding there. Indeed she did, and I don't know if it's going to matter. It depends on how the shotgun blast goes. They do get the down on the lorry, oh. and it would be past the DS timer, I think. Oh, and she also got one on the survivor who's on that gen. True, they, they've got Over two different gens hook. that are like really, really close. And yeah, I think this is gonna be second stage for lorry. Yeah, and they do yes. finish it. They do finish that final gen. No adrenaline, so I'm guessing they'll either the Lori had the adrenaline or the Ace did. And they do know I, where the survivor is. Yeah, Honestly, I... All they have to do I, is get the survivor down and moor them. Yeah, I don't know that... I don't know that they can get it. Maybe they get a two out here? I don't know. It's going to be that really, does not really seem, close. That does not seem like the most likely outcome. Oh! We do not Lori see the has Ace. the adrenaline. Lori, Lori does, does have, the, does have the, adrenaline. the adrenaline. Lori is off. That is clutch. Oh, that, that is, is gonna clutch. Be very, very helpful. Oh, the 360 oh, oh, the spin! Uh, what? Oh, they do get the down, though. There it is. And there you go, you see there's, the Mori. And there's that, uh, there was that add-on coming into play. She knew she mm -hmm. could send those crows because he was right there. God, it's such a good Mori. It's such a good Mori. They made some really good Moris in recent history, too. And there you have it, a fresh survivor. Survivors need to be careful here because and there you have it. That is the no way out. So they've oh, got to be in this no. game at least another 40 seconds. I I can't imagine that they both make it out of here. They unless, are hiding the unless one of them, Unless one of them has the other door ready to go. Maybe. Again, both doors are blocked for this, for this period of time. And this is looking to be a potential, if not 3K, they could still get a 4K here. They've got to yeah. wait out. They went and wait out the timer. Oh, this is so close. She can get a quick hit on this lorry. Blind at the pallet. Toxic survivor behavior. So I mean, toxic. you're just trying to waste as much of the killer's time as possible here. I totally get it. That was big sarcasm, by the way. Big sarcasm? We, yeah, we do that all the time. Oh, okay. I would never we're really, We're really talented survivors, so we, we do that all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good crow tech there from the lorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yep, Remember there that you go. they are now was it swarmed? Yep. They do get that exit gate up. They do have to be careful here. The hatch is going to spawn momentarily. Dead hard could get them the distance to get it too. They do get the out. <gasps> oh my oh! god! The body block. <laughs> Wait. Why did she stop? Why didn't why didn't the artist just down her there? Because I mean, if you down her, you gotta wait for the animation to stop, and you uh, she will fall into the hatch on the ground. Oh my the god! The body block was big brain. Big that brain body was, block wow. there. Wow! Wow! Really well. Wow! Holy moly! Good call from the lorry there. Honestly, that was wow. that was some galaxy brain play. Yeah, that chase just took a bit too long for the artist there at the end. Lori might have been the MVP play of breaking those crows to the flashlight. That might have been what saved them and allowed them enough time to get that second out. Well, I think there was also, I think the other thing that allowed that to happen was there was a, a mistake by the artist just before the end of the match where she had lined up the crows she saw the lorry running towards it and she was trying, mm -hmm. I think she was trying to gauge where the lorry was in relationship to the, the direction to like where the dire crow was. Mm -hmm. And she sent her crow just a scotch too late because she was looking mm -hmm. at an angle. She couldn't quite see where it was. And right. I think if she had sent it on time, if she would, cause she would have gotten that down. Lori was already injured at that point. And then uh... it, it could have been a whole different game, but that was incredibly well played at the end. That lorry, oh, yeah. she looped her just the right amount of time. She used the tools she had, mm -hmm. and that hatch play was so good. <laughs> that was a really good wow. hatch tech. Wow. Yeah, as soon as they got the exit gate open, the lorry bolted for the hatch, and they, both both the killer and the survivor knew what was up. The survivor 
had a I, I would say they might have centered themselves a bit more before it all went down because the killer was just hot on the trail i'm surprised the killer didn't ready up a crow and try and down them before they got to mm. ash but mm. I, well i, I do get high in 2020 in, yeah i see zappies in chat saying the tree blocked me from getting through so yep, the, the body block with the rough. tree that is well rough. and you know you know why i was so confused about why zappy stopped chasing is because when you're playing on switch Getting into the hatch when you're on the yeah. ground is really hard. It is yeah. miserable. You have to be lined up in the perfect direction. <laughs> so I was like, why didn't she just down them? She definitely would have had time to pick them up because I, uh, I yep. you know what I mean? So that's yeah. why I was really confused. But now that you've said that, I'm like, oh, yeah, right. When you're on PC, you just get in. <laughs> so yeah, you it's go. not like. No, you, 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 on Switch, you have to back up like five feet. and You have to like. Do a little spin and a yeah. jig, and then you have to like back in. into a parking spot. You have to do like a twelve-point turn, and then you finally get in. Is this a Switch player that... advocating for a PC? Yeah, of course. Okay. Are you kidding? Don't don't play <laughs> DVD on Switch. You can, you certainly can, but I don't recommend it mm. because the other thing we noticed last night is that because there's more and more content, the game is getting really choppy. They are uh, supposed to have an optimization patch sometime this year, supposedly. Yeah, so, well, they were supposed to have cross-progression two years ago, so. <laughs> Sorry, I'm bitter about it. I know, uh, I don't blame you either. I, I, I know how many hours you put in. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, you know, don't play on Switch. You can, but I wouldn't recommend it. If it's what you've got, do it. But otherwise, like, dude, play, pl play on PC. That's my recommendation. Switch only comp league win? Oh God, no! <laughs> that would be no. You know what? Actually, yes, that would be hilarious. Yeah, it would. Oh, yeah, that, that would, would be, be the, so all painful. All you would, all it would be, is survivors accidentally dropping Shack Pallet while trying to pick up their teammates. <laughs> it would be beautiful. We're yeah, supposed would, to get key binding customization at some point. That's that was also something that we've been waiting uh, for. One day. Are we? Will we though? <laughs> I can dream, Harold. Oh, fine. Sorry, I, 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 I like Azadif way too much. Yes. Anyway. Of, of course. <laughs> that uh, thing. So That was 100%, though, the match that I was expecting to see. It was very close. Mm -hmm. There were some excellent plays on both sides. That was really great. That was, that was super fun to watch. Indeed. I, I would have to agree 100%. And... With that said, it was a 22 to 12 win for Purge in that trial. And we'll have to see how the twins bring it back here for Purge, or I'm sorry, for Divine. I'm really wondering if that extra, like, that extra escape gave a pretty significant margin of points, I think. I think that denied the killer uh, a single point. I think it would have left them at uh, 23. And I think it gave the survivors, like, an additional two points or one. I. It's either two or one, but we've seen games decided by like a one point margin by the end of all the trials for the match point. And so I'm really curious if uh, if getting that second escape from the lore is going to like really come into effect here. I imagine it will, because these two teams are both really excellent. Uh, last week, we got to watch Purge go against sample text. Uh, mm hmm. We've watched Divine play a number of times mm -hmm. uh, against, you know, how did we get here, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, I think that any mistake, any point that is given or taken in these matches is going to matter because they are both very, very strong teams. I am incredibly excited to see how Purge does uh, up against uh, Divine's killer. Mm -hmm. The twins. And I, I am super excited to see what our twins are going to be running for add-ons because we've seen some really interesting things. We've seen things we anticipated, things we didn't. Uh, so I'm I'm very excited for this next one. I actually don't remember the last time that we saw... I don't remember the last time we saw twins without uh, the sword and the stew. Usually those are the go-to add-ons for twins. So I'm curious if it's going to be a mix-up. It was not... The, there, was it when... Did Gilt play twins ever? It might have been somebody played twins and they didn't use the toy sword. Uh, and I don't remember what they used, but I'm going to look because once I see it, I'll okay. remember. Fair I'm enough, fair enough. Eaten. I mean, to be fair, I, I, I would trust your guys' memory over mine. My memory has definitely been lacking in the past couple months. You know, I think that's kind of a, an everybody thing. I think everyone is... I think... Possibly. Everyone's 
sorry, what, I can't understand what you're saying. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I wasn't saying anything interesting. I promise. Oh no, this is this is really close um, though. This is uh, this is really close. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for an invite from our killer here. I can't say who's killing. However, there was a recent tournament where a certain player on Divine was playing Twins and did a pretty bang up job playing Twins. I I wouldn't dis uh, Twins has definitely been either they just are absolutely oppressive or they get steamrolled. I haven't really seen an in between match, so I'm I agree. Going to I'm I'm kind of expecting a slaughter from Twins here because we are on Wrecker's Yard, but we have seen yeah. instances where, again, Twins can, you know, get steamrolled. It's just really how they can manage the counterplay. So I'm looking down in chat, and uh, someone is saying that Guilt played Twins without Tor Sword. That's right. He used he used the Sewer Sludge, I believe. Um, I think oh, I think he did right. use the Sewer, but he also used the Sludge, which is the one that uh, increases the time to remove Victor by two seconds. I remember that now. You're right. And they actually yeah. got value off of that, too. I completely they forgot did. about that. Very good that's point. True. Very good point. I completely forgot about that. That's that's really good to bring up. Yeah, the stew actually was pr or not the stew the the sludge. That's so look weird. At, look at me talking about things like I know things. I what mean, you really? know things? It's, wow, <laughs> wow, sir. I appreciate wow. this. Wow, uh, you should tell <laughs> your chat about the command that we have in our stream now. What command? <laughs> I don't remember Jenny, a command. Jenny, you should you should tell the champions of the fog friends what what that we what command we made. Uh, we made a hashtag fantastic command for any time Rue enters the chat because if, which first of all pup hypes him. It gives him hype. It sh it links his channel of oh, course, of course, and also reminds everyone that Rue is a fantastic individual. Absolutely. Command fantastic. If you're ever at Junico, exclamation point fantastic. I mean, you guys can't. It's a mod thing, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell whether I should try to continue avoiding this or just lean into it really hard and just really to nail that word into the point. ground. I you, think you've got to you've got to make merch is what you got to do. <laughs> Regard I, hashtag fantastic. Oh hashtag fantastic. goodness, merch is the furthest thing from my mind. I have barely any branding done. I one day Rude. i'm i honestly I, I would try to get champions of the fog merch before my own at this point because i think there'd be i think there's more to lean into branding wise on champions just saying hashtag no we don't have merch yet but maybe soon yes <laughs> hey. hell yeah hell yeah maybe maybe just I, I i could hear guilt already in the background going what is this guy doing <laughs> oh my god he's like making more work for me jesus right just, oh man it is what it is, I, but we do have the lobby forming, and it's actually, I, it's not who I thought was going to be playing Twins today, so something's ooh. in the air tonight. Ooh. Obviously well, that's goes, ominous. Is right? that ominous? That sounded really ominous. <laughs> Should very people ominous. be concerned? I, I would I be very like, concerned, yes. I feel like you need to comfort chat. I need to com- What? You've probably really concerned them. I feel like you need to say something to comfort them now, Ruth. What? Let them know it's going to be fantastic. Let them know it's going to be okay. I don't know if it is going to be okay. <laughs> no. I'm not no, the adult in this situation anymore. You're old enough to make your own decisions. No, there we go. Okay. I'm, I'm letting chat go. No, chat, we got I'm you. We got you. We're going to nest. We're, we're, we're wrapping a nice warm blanket around you. Oh, my. We're okay. giving you <laughs> some cookies <laughs> and a mug of whatever you like to drink. Oh my and goodness. we're hugging you tight, and we're telling you it's gonna be okay. It's not gonna be okay, though. It's twins. It's, it's gonna no. It's gonna be fine. That is exactly how I feel, Rue. It is not gonna be okay. Right? It is twins. <laughs> twins are no, 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 no. twins are gross. I, despite the fact that Perch knows well in advance that they're playing against twins right now, you can have all the time in the world to prepare, but if that is one thing that I will give twins credit for is that I feel like twins has the potential to capitalize on survivor mistakes almost more than any other killer in the game. That they, is true. Probably if they get a snowball started, it is so hard to stop the snowball of a twins, especially with but the I limited think... resources that survivors get in comp. You only get one unbreakable. If there's no boot or there's no uh, totem or hex that you don't get soul guard. 
But you have also mentioned previously that there is counterplay for twins. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's lots together. of counterplay. So I think that is probably one of the reasons why we've seen kind of like big roles mm -hmm. or getting rolled. There really hasn't been like True. a middle ground with everything. I think that if the survivors play it really smart, if they split up in pairs, mm -hmm. they stick together, they're healing each other, they're on the lookout to body block for Victor, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I think, I think that they have a good chance here. I do no. also think that it's divine <laughs> and divine divine is point. they're really good divine is very and good so i i imagine that they are probably a little bit nervous but they're gonna do great we believe in them <laughs> so yeah someone no, I says i heard i heard purge are bringing no mither so twins can't slug just saying i'm certain uh -huh, <laughs> i'm so certain that that's what's happening we haven't seen it yet Wait, is that? That's, that's all I'm going oh. to say. Oh, oh my God. Shut the front door. I, I can guarantee you that's just some friendly banter. I cannot for the life of me imagine why a survivor would willingly give twins a automatic stack of thanatophobia, but <laughs> we've seen stranger that's things. True. Not anymore because it's not in the game anymore, but we have seen stranger things. <laughs> but I mean. Oh, that was good. But I mean, that could actually. Okay. Go with me here. Oh, God. Imagine a scenario in which you have a, someone on your team running no mither, right? Mm -hmm. The obvious move in some ways for a killer is, is to tunnel them out immediately, right? That's easy. Yes. You, just, you get them out. That's done. However, you could also not and save them for later, right? You could say. Maybe. I'm going to let them go, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get this person out first. Or put them in a position where the no mither has to go for a rescue. I or something. I, I don't think just, I'm not saying it's a I'm not saying it's a good plan, Rue. I would just tunnel up I'm the glad. no mither. I would put them on a hook and I would just camp it like twins would do because they've just proxy it. Uh, especially if you've got the basement here, if you can get an early basement. That's the thing. The survivors to counterplay, they're just going to take chases as far away from the basement as possible because you do not want to go to the basement. If you go to the basement, it's lights out for a survivor. That's fair. So I wish no mither was more viable. <sighs> do you want to know how I've like, this, know how... like behavior even mentions when they buffed no mither? It's like we understand that no mither, like people like running it because they like running hard mode for survivor. I don't think they're going to buff it any more than they already have. The fact that they gave it a, like a, a little bit of a speed boost for getting up, I think is good. But I think that's the do last wanna... we're going to see. Do you want to know how you can fix no mither though? It's so oh. easy. It's the easiest thing. You start with no. You start healthy, and then as soon as you're you start injured, healthy, mm -hmm. and as soon as you take your first hit, you're no mither. I do like that idea, I've, and that's not the first time I've heard it either. I do like that idea because then no one knows that you have no mither, and that exactly. is really cool. Exactly. That is really cool. And it's a real like that's it. a really that's a simple thing. That's not even something that's gonna like buff it super hard or no, like make no, no, no. it like a super meta perk. It's still no mither, mm -hmm. but it does give you a cushion. To potentially be able to use it more effectively mm -hmm. that is true we will we'll have to see I, I i imagine behavior might not be opposed to do it but i don't think no mithers on the radar especially after they just gave it a buff recently that's fine that's true we, we can dream maybe one day but they've got a, like a I bunch of other dream. perks they need to address like empathy maybe or <laughs> there's a bunch of other things they've got to go through and you know tune up first since they've uh they seem to be they seem to have a list of perks like okay these aren't great Let's see what we can do to buff them a little bit. Yeah. So, I'm here for it. I'm uh, here for you, Rue. Oh, thank you. Because you asked, and we were like, oh, he's so dreamy. Let's go do the casting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this, but I do yeah, know how I to feel about this game know. coming up here because we are loading in as we speak. All right. We got the twin spawn. We got the corrupt zone. You called it. That's the stew and the toy sword, both of which are going to give Victor some extra. You do have a totem, and they're going to Charlotte body block the totem right off the bat. Also, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Uh, big zoomies and also decreased pounce time. <laughs> they get the hit from around oh, wow. it anyway. Wow. What a wow. Shot. Oh, boy. This, oh. this is going to oh, be boy. interesting. <laughs> that said, um, oh, man. 
The survivors are well aware now. Okay, it looks like that gen's progressing. So it looks like it's a ruined totem. The survivors also know about Thanatophobia here. And they're just going to go ahead and pre-drop this pallet right away. So the thing that I've seen the most since the twins uh, have come out in their, you know, their, their course through comp. Oh, interesting. So they're over here. They see that killer instinct. So they are in a both survivors are breaking off. Deadheart's not going to get them anywhere, though. And he is going to go down relatively quickly here. Flashlight say no, it's not. Bummer. Oh, that would have that would have been very cool. An early first down for this killer as well. And I don't. I was about to say, you should oh! oh, Why would they go for the wow, basement? That is the oh, best wow, wow, use wow, of wow. that palette. That was actually kind wow. of brutal. I don't know if that was planned or not. Like, you don't necessarily, I, that that was weird. I can't that believe we just can, saw that. Wow. That could throw a wrench into things later on, losing that, that first hook going in the basement. That was going to be a really, really big problem for our survivors. True. <laughs> They are taking a couple of hits there, and they do need to reset. I think that's what they were trying to do with the Nia there with the Ace, and not able to reset just yet. Oh, Survivor did stay here. Maybe Iron will? I don't hear them. Jen's still regressing, are so we... they have not found the Ruin yet. Are we allowed to say that they're running Tornado Fall now? Oh, yeah. We, we, they, 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 Survivors are well aware. Survivors are well aware. Okay. Remember, they, yeah, they, see, so... they see the red uh, indicator in the corner when they are working on a generator. So they are running Fanatophobia, which does mean that by getting all of these hits, not only are they more vulnerable to a Victa Pounce, but they are also going to have increased time on all of their things, and it is miserable. True. Fanatophobia is really, really oh. good on this killer. Dude, you see that body blocking so they can't lock them in the locker there? Wow, that was really clever. It really was. And they're I've... actually almost done with this generator, too, despite the slowdown. They're doing a really good job given given the twins the runaround here. I am very impressed. Yeah. However, the notice they haven't done a gen yet to completion. I was about to say. And they've also been they're all injured right now, so it has been a slow oh. grind. I would say kind of in the favor of the twins so far. Yeah, but I think the fact that they've been able to just keep her moving and mm -hmm. keep her kind of off balance. It lends itself well to uh, to whatever they've got planned. Also, I can't imagine someone hasn't seen that totem there Nia already. Did just then. They've, they've gone past it twice. Ooh, dead right oh. there to try to get some distance. No, not able to slide up the tree, and so Victor will get it down there. However, Ace knock it. Oh, they do get the kick. That's Heck actually surprising. Yes. I thought it was that was a cooldown. Very risky play it really that the was. Ace made because if they had not gotten that kick, they also probably would have gone down. And they got the Nia up right away. They probably have We're Gonna Live Forever, would be my guess. Absolutely. However, this. Oh, this and Adam healed already? A, this wow. Adam does not have a pallet here anymore, so Adam is going to be have to be very careful. He's running a dry loop. Indeed, and I imagine they've called out that totem by now, but the problem is that totem is also going to be. Notice this. Twins is not leaving this area, so this totem is probably no, going to stay for not. for a while here. So my biggest thing is that they've actually wasted, I think, well not wasted, but they've, oh my goodness, that was a weird ricochet off that wall, but they've used three or four pallets already this match, and no gens have been done, no hooks have been done, we just waited out for the Krub Zone is all we did. But they're also doing a really good job of running mm -hmm. without throwing pallets as well. True. That. Making really good use of blocking line of sight. Oh. Oh, good oh, dog. No. Oh, no. And they she's going to get the kick sure. as well. These survivors are really, really doing a good job putting pressure on her and keeping her, I would say, a little bit distracted. They are doing a really good job. I remember, remember, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but they do actually have a twins mate on their team. So they do probably have, they probably <gasps> like to say significant amounts. And good body that block was, there. They are. I am really impressed. I would that have to agree. Was, I'm gonna have Junie Burnout to take that into our matches. <laughs> that locker shenanigans. Mm. We're great at lockers. And yeah, they're trying to find the survivor, and I imagine they are going to be. Are they gonna kidnap Victor? It looks like they are gonna be end up kidnapping Victor after all here. No, never mind. I hear oh, them. So them. they're here. Wow. But this is going to be a long match if they can't get that ruined. Oh, that's a second gen. 
That's wow. Exactly what wow. They're doing. They're not bothering to take out the root. They're just doing it. No, they, never mind. They took oh, out the root. Oh, and they got all. it. And the ace oh. is gonna come in for the body block. Oh, wow, yeah, not wow, quite wow. Able to get it. However, you're gonna get the cat on Victor here. Yeah. They don't know if Maybe Charlotte's right around the corner we're though. Forever? Charlotte is right around the corner here. Yeah, you're oh. not gonna be able to get it. Still though. Very that close. That is a <laughs> wild ride we've just been on. I don't know about sending Victor out before hooking her because they've already shown that they are playing this very, very smartly. Yeah, yep. you might and be right. Up again. Yep. I would, yeah, I would have picked up immediately. And Luis secured that hook. However, because, again, are, they are all injured, except for, yeah, they, right here. They are all injured now. So as soon as they get Victor back, if they have not reset by that time, it, again, ease, oh, they, they, they do get rid of Victor. So this could be the snowball the screens are looking for. Blocking yeah. that pallet, very smart. Oh, oh! A little wow. bit too close to the pallet. Yeah, you can stun Charlotte out. Oh, and the reverse back too. Good mind games here. Oh, and Charlotte oh. blocked the oh, pallet. Oh, oh. This is that is disappointing. This is beautiful looping Again. done by our. Oh, here. oh. oh my god! Oh. This is wild. And she's gonna leave the Zarina and go for the ace. That is wow, wow, that wow, is wow. Crazy. They need to get a hook here soon. They have to add a phobia, but Ruin is gone now. We've seen Deadlock. So the survivors know all the perks on the table here. They know there's no no way out. They know there's no no ed. Man, I am just, this is so good. She is getting the ace down. Another gen. But the Adam is still healthy. Yeah, here we go. This found the Nia. Yeah, they find the Nia. Nia, unfortunately, going to the the dead heart in the locker. <laughs> Worth noting, Ace, I believe, is the one with the we're gonna live forever. I think they even know that possibly. And so this pickup is gonna take up a little bit longer. I don't know if they're gonna be able to get survivors up. This probably is, no. They do get them. Oh, up. he's oh. up. He is up because the Adam. Th <sighs> I am. I would be quaking if I were the twins right now. They are playing this so beautifully. They are making excellent choices. They are being just altruistic enough without mm -hmm. sacrificing anybody. They are playing this beautifully. Oh, not able to get through the window there. And they come back through for the kick. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, these survivors is... are playing out of their minds. I have not yes, seen survivors are. play this well against twins before. I mean, she's not gotten a hook. She's three gens down and she has not gotten a single hook because her first hook was denied her by Shaq Pallet. Her second hook, she didn't take. She just let them slug and they got picked up. I think she has got to start picking people up immediately and hooking them. She's got to but tunnel somebody out of this game and put the pressure problem. on them. Like if you down someone with Victor, you're all the way across the map. That's what the survivors are doing so well. If you notice when they are getting down by Victor, they're nowhere near Charlotte most of the time if they can help it. She's just gonna go for an M1 here, which she gets and she needs to pick up and hook. But she I, chooses not here. to. They're all here though. They're trying to get as many extra states of health here as possible. Victor is still being kidnapped across the map. They did get the recall, though. And yeah, they are going to finally go for this hook. Yeah, that's, that's the thing that throws me off is we saw the same thing earlier where uh, as the artist, they went for the basement hook, but then they're like, okay, you know what? No, I'm not going to make that. I'm going to hook outside. But the problem was as soon as they like they looked around, they didn't see another hook in the area they actually could have gone to besides the basement. So that's why they went for it. Yeah, yeah. And they do get their first hit, uh, sorry, first hook here, finally. Three gens try down. Kick, try kicking some gens, never a thing you want to be doing, especially in a game with so much pressure. Oh boy. I will say with the natophobia, dry kicking doesn't feel the absolute worst, but yeah, it's not a situation you want to be in. Oh, last second oh, borrow time hit, and they wow. will get the kick on Victor. And the neat, wow. They are not taking any chances here. They are playing so smart. They're keeping healed as much as they can. They're taking hits. They're using borrowed. This is really, be these survivors are cracked, my guy. Again, they do have a resident <laughs> twins main on their team. So I imagine knowing what they're going to be playing against, they drilled for this game over and over again. And boy, does it pay off. It really does. And there you go taking the hit so they're not able to keep Zarina in the locker and Victor has gone Victor has gotten so many piggyback files this game 
Victor's just, you know what? He's got a card and he's gonna he's gonna punch it every time she gets piggyback ride, and then eventually mm -hmm. he gets a free down. That's how it goes. Oh, getting caught a little bit in the mind, guys. However, this is close to the basement. They might finally get the basement hook they've oh, been looking no. for. Yeah, and they're gonna yeah, go right like for they're it. They're going for it. And I'm pretty sure Zarina was the one with the poppers, so. We're saying though, that is the fourth gen done for these survivors, and they just now have their second hook for the killer. Deadlock on this gen. And that's about, that's a good 50% of the way there, but it is right next to the basement. So this virus will have to find a different gen. They have reset entirely though, so. So now the question, oh, man, she, the... so she did not, she's not plopped Victor somewhere near basement. So the question is, do you just go for that rescue? Because I would have anticipated some amount of camping. And I guess she can proxy, but I mean. Yeah, you can proxy pretty good. But you can, you can also, creep over the window and walk down there, you know? I mean, even if you're checking constantly, survivors can get down there. It happens all the time. I hope you completely or, honest. I think they would be content to let the survivor, oh, no, I think we just saw the uh, the ace there on the edge. I think the survivors would be content to leave this survivor in the basement and just finish a gen and get a three out. I think they should. And I'm not one to say that often. Nope. But I think that's what they should do. Ooh, light's gonna give a, this ace a lot of distance here. So I was using their, they used up a lot of resources at the beginning with pallets, but they have since really been conservative on these. Uh, yeah, and there you see it um, going into second stage on the survivor. They do have someone down here though for the hook oh. trade. Oh no. Sprint first will get the Zarina out of here during the borrow time period. So they are gonna go for hook trade, but it did progress the second stage. So not quite able to get it in time. Well, and if that ace could get a heal off, he could go down with we're gonna live forever and pick up. Or if Nia has unbreakable. Or if True. or if Nia has unbreakable. They so there's still a lot of ways yet. this can go wrong for for our killer here. Did they not see the Adam go to the back? I don't think they I did. Think I think they missed the, it. I didn't see the Adam go to the back, so. I did not see the Adam go to the back. I saw the Adam move, but I didn't see where they went. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have not gone for the. Oh. They're looking around for an injured survivor. If they can get one more survivor down, and the survivors read that too. They know that if they get a, another slug here, it's going to be really bad for them. So, yeah, they're going to go up to go for the hook here. I imagine Ace and Zarina are healing. So, there you go. We see the heal on the Zarina. They need to hide the Zarina because Zarina is now death hook. If there is a 3v1 situation, the gens aren't quite spread out enough that twins couldn't be able to, you know, work with them. Look, that dry kicked it so much on that gen. It is completely regressed. However, it looks like there might be two survivors on this gen. It is almost, and they're about to leave. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They're willing to take the hit to pop the gen. Yep. No adrenaline on the Zarina, though, and everybody's injured. If Victor comes into play, they could. Yeah, Victor sees the killer instinct, and so this could be a snowball potential again for these, this killer. A little bit of locker tech here. Uh, they are playing this locker tech insanely well, and they Ow. do get the unhook in the meantime. Ow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, no, they wow. missed the Zarina. Oh, 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 and they no. get that kick. You saw Victor shake his head because they knew. Oh, no. Yeah, and there's oh, that exit gate out. And you see the twins. They are very unhappy with the way this game went. Yeah, One they survivor are. out, two survivor outs. Oh, three survivor three. out. And there's the hatch. They missed it from the Adam. Oh, oh wow. my God. Oh, that is rough. That was insane. Insane. But that was just absolutely beautiful on the survivor's part. That was bananas. That might be some of the best anti-twins play I have seen to date. That was that, really, that really, was I feel bad just... for the killer because I, I don't think the killer played poorly. No, I, not at all. I think the only thing they messed up was that first down, early down, they went for the basement hook and they may have should have played a bit more conservatively, but like, they played really well. Just survivors just never gave them an inch. Never gave them a single moment. Oh my word. That should go in an instructional DVD on how to counter <laughs> twins. Seriously. That gameplay was stunning. Yep. The survivors yes, it played was. that beautifully. And you're right. She did not play poorly. Our killer did not play poorly. No. At all. That was just. That was rough an unbelievable an unbelievable showing from the survivors and i think it's also a perfect example of something we've said time and time again oh, dbd is a game of minute mistakes being capitalized on mm -hmm. she tried to go to basement adam got that pallet save she left that the nia on the ground when she should have picked up 
the ace went and picked her up with we're gonna live forever like minute tiny tiny Mm -hmm. mistakes but it all snowballs towards the end and then even when she got them all injured missing the zarina was Mm -hmm. that was like the last thing because as soon as she got that that kickoff there was there was nothing she could do and she knew it you saw her shake her Mm -hmm. head as victor and you saw her swing in the air like she was that was Mm. brutal really that was was just a really it was a good showing by both sides yeah, yeah, if the if the if, yeah if Victor had gotten the hit on Zarina, it would have been at least a one k letting us. Yeah, that would have would have given the twins something, but it still would have been a really strong showing. Like that would have still been a three out five stage. So I don't know that that was wow. that was insane. With that said, it is going to be eighteen to eleven on that trial for Purge, and is going to result in a set point for Purge forty to twenty three going into set number two here. Not really what I was expecting going into today's game. Like, I'm not saying Purge is like a bad team by any stretch of imagination, but Divide has been dominant this entire season. Yes, they have. But you know, I think sometimes when you have a team that has been dominant, not that it's easy to get complacent, but I Mm -hmm. do think it's easy to get a little bit comfortable. And we heard from people that Purge were very nervous going into today. Mm -hmm. And that extra, those nerves, that extra little bit of adrenaline caused them to play their very best in that match. I mm-hmm. mean, they just, they just did all the right things. They didn't, yeah. I didn't, I, I don't know. It was so, that was probably one of the most fun matches we've watched because it was, was so insane. close the whole time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, at oh, any moment wild. they could snowball. And that the thing that blows my mind in all of this, I might, I, the survivors might be able to call me out here. I don't think they used unbreakable once. No, I don't think they did either. They 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 just didn't see deliverance. We didn't see decisive strike. They didn't use any of their second chance perks. Nope. But I think a lot of that came down to they didn't let themselves go down very often. Because as soon as one person got hit, you had someone coming into body block or block the locker or, you know, this, that, and the other thing. They didn't give themselves, they didn't, they didn't give themselves or her the opportunity to down them whenever possible. They clearly had excellent communication i mean i am just i am floored Mm -hmm. that was incredible on both sides that was really incredible yeah i am i probably will be watching that game again to figure out like Uh uh-huh i'm trying to go back and like okay i i will admit there was like looking back on it a bit more now there were a couple of victor misses that maybe shouldn't have been missed but at the same time the survivors did some really weird things. <laughs> things yep. that you that don't was. normally see. Like the, the obvious ones, like, you know, Dead Harding going around a tree. Victor was able to get those. They were able to get the ones that you've always seen, but the survivors doing really weird stuff, like vaulting back into Charlotte twice. I was about to say. Like, there is some really weird stuff going on. I'll tell you what, if I'm the killer on Divine going into this next match, I am watching out for that Zarina, who uh, happens to be Zappies, who was our killer in the first round. Mm. Mm. I am I am watching out for her because they were doing some crazy looping. They were making really weird and very very big brain plays that just mm-hmm. resulted in in wasting her time and extending chase for so long. So I I'm keeping an eye on that one. Whew. So I, I we didn't actually get to mention this because as soon as he mentioned you know survivors giving thin out of phobia stacks. Uh, there was a, a, a totem blow and a gen done and there was a slug moment. We never got back to it. Thanatophobia is absolutely insane on twins because survivors generally stay injured. Now survivors did a good job of resetting constantly. But do you know who also does really good with Thanatophobia? Who? Plague. Oh, boy. That's right, folks. We got a plague mirror coming up on Father Campbell's Chapel. Oh, no. Oh, yes. It's just when you think it couldn't get any grindier. That is okay. <laughs> I this is going to be interesting. Love see- I love I've mentioned this before with other people. I think maybe even you guys. I love seeing Plague and Comp because the variety of add-ons that are useful, uh, seeing what people's preference are, the builds aren't always quite the same. You didn't, again, Thanatophobia, Corrupt, sometimes Deadlock, sometimes not. Like, you take, you, you obviously take Thanatophobia and Corrupt, because Corrupt, no one takes it without Corrupt. Like, I've seen, I have now seen three games this season where they didn't take Corrupt, and all of them were steamrolls in the survivor's favor, so you need Corrupt. Thanatophobia is just, you you bring it, because if you don't, I don't know what you're doing. But we, 
we do see a mix up on the other two perks oftentimes the add-ons have a decent variety to them and i just love watching plague i don't know why it's it's one of the most interesting hybrid killers in the game for me because they do have a range technically but they're the only 115 range technically at the same time well okay i guess you, you guess you have artists i guess artists and plague are kind of pseudo range plague is a yeah. lot more lethal in the in the range category but artist gets like yeah. cross map and information i don't know mm. <sighs> i'm excited so to see a question. plague match oh Yes, I have a question for you. Okay. It's an opinion question. Are you oh, ready to share your oh, opinion goody. with the world? No, I'm not. No. Okay, hit me. So, I mean, it's it's about what we're talking about. It's not a big thing. So, if you're if you are now divine All going right. into this next matchup, what are you thinking, and how do you kind of gather yourself back up after after a devastating uh, match like that? Because that match was, in a lot of ways, very devastating. And we could see that, that the was killer intense, was yeah. visibly, visibly unhappy at the end. How do you gather yourself up? What are you thinking going into this next match? Um, since it is a personal opinion, I'd be quite relieved. Because I think Plague's better than Twins. Personally. Okay, um, fair. So I would be happy that I don't... Because that's the thing is that... Twins has an it just absolutely grotesquely high skill cap, I would argue. Plague is similar. Plague has it also a high skill cap. Any, any range-ish killer has a, has a pretty high skill cap. But in addition, Twins is an incredibly mentally taxing killer to play. Plague, True. not so much. They're both grindy, but Plague's a bit different. You're not having to worry about two different locations, the cat and mouse. You're not having to worry about two different... You got an M1 mechanic and you got a lunge, like, mini demo mechanic. Plague is M1. You got you got two things to worry about. You got one place to be in. What, what I would actually room? be pretty relieved. I'd be pretty relieved to play Plague in this situation because I feel like this killer is much more intuitive. I think they're just stronger than Twins at this point after how many times Twins have been nerfed. So, I don't know. Again, you asked for personal opinion. Chat's probably going to read me for that one. I I like Twins a lot. Anytime I get to play comp and I get to play twins, I'm a happy camper. So not what do literally, you do? I don't camp because that's not the way you play. But okay, if you if you get your power, you camp. Okay, never mind. Beyond the point. What What's if? <laughs> what if you, like, what if you are are in a situation where you've had a big loss in the previous match and then you've got to go into another one? How like what are you? What do you do to kind of bring yourself back from that to well, like gather yourself? Regardless of what killer you were playing or are going it's to play. A, it's a fresh set, so a set point is still on the table here. It is a fresh set, so you just gotta, you gotta play the best you can for the set point. The match point being 17 points behind, we have seen comebacks from a 17 point deficit going into this next set. But you, as the killer, you, in my mind, you play for the set point. And if you can play for the set point, then you just gotta trust your survivors can bring it home. And d somehow during that, again, if you can get like, you know, a five, six point win as your killer, your survivors have a chance to get the extra points to bring it back in the other direction. You can total it up into a reversal, but honestly, just I'd go for an eight stage 2K and that would be my goal if I can get more good. But uh, I, I don't know if I would play it too much differently. Again, the fact that so we have a fresh set point on the line is very refreshing. That's something you can go for. And you, that's a that is an easy goal that you can look for to attain the match point is more teamwork based. You're not going to be able to bring it back. You're not going to be able to bring back a full match point in a single trial necessarily. I mean, obviously, you know, 4K at five gens, but I don't think we've seen a 4K at five gens this season. Mm. I don't think we've seen. Uh, no. I don't I think, think we've, we've seen, seen it yeah. three. Yeah, that's that's about the rough as we've seen for the survivors this season. So I don't imagine it's going to be the case. Yeah, it, it's not very doable in that regard. You don't want to take all of it onto your back. Strive for something achievable. Eight stage 2K with Plague, I think, is very achievable. Go for that and then say, all right, Survivors, rest is in your hands. I got us, you know, I got a six point, seven points back out of the deficit we have. Now it's your turn. And let your Survivor team do it. If that makes sense. Wow. I don't know. Maybe a bit no, that makes here. Sense. No, 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 no. That makes sense. So essentially... You're going into this not trying to like be like, oh god, I got a 4K. You, you're going in being like, reasonably we can come back from this. 
like we can still make a, a good a good go of, of getting this set, mm-hmm. go for a 2K, yep. and then trust in our survivors. Yep. Also, one thing I also I didn't even realize this is that uh, based on what I've heard from Purge, this might be their last league game uh, for their team. Um, what? From what really? I understand, Purge is now going exclusively to tournaments. I, again, you guys might correct me. I think Purge is going to be exclusively targeting tournaments now and taking a backseat to league play. They're going to be going exclusively from tournament to tournament instead of committing to a league at a time. Which I understand, like, if you're wanting to go more heavily into tournaments, committing to leagues is very difficult because it is a constant every week thing that you're going to be committing to, especially if you join multiple leagues. Mm. So if you want to free yourself up on your roster to play tournaments specifically, it's much more flexible. You can Selfishly, also spend a lot I'm... more time prepping for specific tournaments instead of being like, okay, we have this league game we have to uh, be ready for. We have this league game we have to be ready for. So maybe Selfishly, they want to very... go in style. I'm very sad about that because they've been really fun to watch. Mm. Yes, they have. Not that you can't still watch them do other things, <laughs> but I mean, you know, we don't get to we don't get to talk about it with people on the internet, and that would be mm-hmm. sad. True, true. And again, I this is just based on stuff I've heard from people talking that might have changed, but that is my assumption as of the moment is that this will be uh well. I don't think there's any other, because Vico's just ended. I don't think there's any other leagues they're involved in. I could be wrong. I think this is the last one. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not the last we're going to see a Purge. No, I, I, I expect Purge to go on for many tournaments to come. And uh, who knows? Maybe they'll become a, a staple home name. You might see on and off now. Love this. Indeed. And Love with this said, we them. are still waiting for the lobby. Survivors are in. Killer is in. I think they're just getting some last things nailed out. I will say I'm not a huge fan of Father Campbell's Chapel after the rework. I feel like before the rework, Father Campbell's was probably one of the go-to maps as far as balance. The the map definitely feels a lot less balanced than it did. The breakable walls, I don't I don't like the breakable wall philosophy we've seen implemented in a lot of games. Not a huge yeah. fan of that. But it's also just the geometry of the map. It's, it feels a bit taller, so I'm curious if Plague is going to be able to get those shots that they used to be. I don't think it's a bad map for Plague, per se. I think Plague is actually not too bad off on this map, uh, as opposed to Huntress, where she's throwing, you know, freight trains at you, and they'll get right. caught on the slightest pixel. Uh, everyone knows how I feel about, uh, about Trickster on that map. I think Trickster is garbage tier on that map. Um... Plague actually is a bit more forgiving with their hitbox and their vomit on this map, I feel like. So it's not it's not bad for Plague. I think Plague is actually a pretty good pick here. Well, I mean, Plague Plague in general is a little more forgiving because True. you're 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 vomiting little pixels and it it literally takes one little pixel to hit you and you can either reinfect it or you can go down. I love like, that that's the way you describe it. Hey, did you see the documentary for how they made Plague? Oh, and our lobby no. just died upsetting but also no okay sorry yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna be waiting for an invite yeah the, the entire lobby just crashed on me sorry uh but maybe a little bit long before we get to this game i apologize but um so there was a documentary when play came out because the dev team did have a lot of things to tackle as far as like they had this killer concept they wanted to do but how do you make, because I don't know if you guys noticed, like, the vomit's actually, like, really realistic looking. They did a really decent job making it look like a realistic vomit projectile. And so the way they coded that, I don't know if you, like, if you, like, spin around really fast when you vomit or whatever, it is little spherical hitbox blobs that have a texture chained between each of them. Oh, so oh. It, that's not actually like the, the the texture in between does not count as a hitbox. The blobs do. So you have to calculate where the blobs are going to be hitting, which honestly, you're probably not going to want to calculate. It's really difficult. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the I if you guys ever get a chance, I, w- I would recommend going and watch it. There's a lot of really intricate things they went into on Plague as far as a design concept. It's a very, very bizarre killer, but yeah, the, the hitbox for those blobs isn't, it, it's actually a little bit large than you think because you'll be vomiting. It's like, wait, why am I hitting this thing on the side? It actually is a decent hitbox size. It's not, 
It's not Hunter's Hatchet large, obviously, but it is, I think, bigger than the Trickster's Knife. So it can get caught on stuff, but Trickster's Knife is going in a straight line for the first couple of uh, meters. Arguably, I'm not saying it is a straight line. It is technically a fall off, but it's so minuscule. It's not worth talking about. As opposed to Plague, which arcs. So the arcing mechanism right. of her vomit is why it's better on this map because you actually right. can get over most of the geometry. I don't know. I mean, I'm getting technical here. Chat's probably like, oh my goodness, shut up and play the game. I'm sorry, we're trying. <laughs> I mean, DVD do be doing its thing, so. It's true. True. I, I have had a lot of crashes that have been suspect the past couple of weeks. It's been actually a very annoying recurrence where I'm having a game, things are going well, and oh, the game crashed. Now, why would that be? Anyway, I, uh, I'm, 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 I'm getting a bit salty and sus. Anyway, but regardless, um, lobby. You want to talk about? Soon. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about connection issues? Try playing on the Switch. Oh God. Oh, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> suggesting connection issues. Um, well, at least you make it into a match. Fair. I, I, I did see that last night. Is where the the Switch just doesn't. Uh, that is an issue. I will give you that. <laughs> That's. <sighs> I, I blame the Switch, not, uh, not anything else. I mean, the Switch is how many years oh. old now? I think it's like, what, a five-year-old console at this point? It's, yeah. Yeah. It's actually pretty old, surprisingly, because, I mean, to be fair, the Switch was still, like, it was a absolutely banger console when it came out, but I wonder what the next iteration is going to be for Nintendo. I don't know. They, they, they haven't even know, hinted man. at everything, have they? Not, not no, really. No, not really, because they did an updated version of the Switch. Mmm, yeah, because you had the Wii, you had the Wii U, you've had how many versions of the 3DS? I guess that's fair, is that if you have a good product, maybe do an upgraded version. I mean, I guess Xbox does that occasionally. What is, does the PlayStation ever do that? I remember the PS, uh, PS2 had the PS2 Slim. Did, I know Xbox does like the special versions of their console. Does PlayStation generally do that? I don't actually know. I don't honestly know. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know either. Anybody in chat? Anybody uh, PS4 enjoyers? Anybody PS5 enjoyers? Do they do special versions of the console? I'm curious. Anyway, we are in fact loading it, and I want to see some Vommy Mommy. Oh, gosh. Oh, yes. Oh, there we go. Oh. Not quite making the... Uh, whenever I vomit at these objects, like the these gens or whatever, or the hooks, um, I always look up here. Yeah, you see the contagious. As soon as I see the contagious, I know I hit it. I'm always looking. That's, that, that's the only way you can tell because it takes a while for the animation to actually go up on the uh, uh, on the object you vomited on. They're just gonna yeah, they're gonna work through uh, the outside of the corrupt zone and just you know get everything infected. Makes sense. It looks like we have the yellow. Actually, this is pretty standard. We see the yellow apple and not the worship tablet. I forget what this one is called, but I think it gives you an extra twenty seconds of your corrupt purge. I will take a look for you because I have that pulled up. Okay. I forget what it's called, but I believe this is the one that gives you an extra 20 seconds of your corrupt purge timer. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense now. I, I This is fairly popular. That is the devotees. What is what is the deep devotees amulet, Alex Trebek? Ah. And that is, it does increase your corrupt purge by 20 seconds. It is pretty good. Um, having that extra corrupt purge time is super nice. And there you see the, this is the only thing I dislike about Plague. If you heard them, it sounded like uh, they got infected. They only got infected from the uh, the pallet. This killer oh. has the same issue as other killers, like Dr. Ghostface, where there is a dedicated check that just absolutely screws them over. Well, they do find the lorry, though, and they will get them infected. Yeah, that's my only thing against this killer, is that they do suffer from the dedicated thing. They're not going yeah. to bother sticking on there. They're just going to go and uh, try and figure out where more survivors are. This shit's actually almost done. It looks as though they are going for the get everybody infected route, which, you know, very smart. It is. And True. the question then will become, how do the survivors deal with cleansing? That's always the question. Because think... cleansing can be the thing that really screws you. <laughs> True. I think generally what we've seen as far as the cleansing idea is it's cleanse as a need by need basis. 
you obviously you never want to give them too much power but you know they're gonna bring an apple in almost every time it, it, it's it's really uh it went from nobody cleansed to everybody cleansed to play it by ear and there's it's it's a gray area now which i don't like i don't like gray areas but well you know what they say rue an apple a day keeps survivors at bay i have not heard that that's actually really cute thank you i just made it up <laughs> excellent copyright that <laughs> copyrighted done all right there you go we do see zarina finally get infected as they go into the father campbell's chapel itself Worth noting, Corrupt is up. No, yeah, but that was our first gen. Survivors do see that there is Thanatophobia on the table, which, I mean, I don't know if anybody's surprised. It's it's free real estate. Thanatophobia is so free on them. It's free real estate. It is free real estate. And that oh, is wow. Two gens, Two gens have popped. Oh, but we do have someone with a beamer over here. And there's two deadlock gens. So they have two oh. separate gens that have been worked on between those times that have gone up, which well, means that there it. are... Yeah, they popped those gens, then went over to another, got that one up, and they there's two gens deadlocked. Yeah, and there you go, they they're did, gonna camp us out. They did give uh, the killer some good information with that, though. So True. the killer is now very aware. Oh, they're not camping it out. I am surprised by this. I guess they're like, well, I, am I don't have time. By this. They may realize I'm they also, may not have time. I am also surprised by the decision. Oh, wait, no, no. I, yeah, I wouldn't have left that Zarina. Oh, I, that was I close. I, Based on this last match, I would have stuck with her on hook. She is trouble. They're all trouble. That might have yes, been the, uh, oh, I can't what? believe that missed. Oh, wow. that's brutal. That's wild. And I think this, yeah, I think this, the Nia left for the, mm, and a third gen popping for these survivors. So these survivors are everywhere at once. It is absolutely crazy. They're doing a great job, though. They're keeping themselves spread out. They're keeping her kind of bouncing between them. They're not really giving her the chance to, to pick someone and stick it. Mm hmm And... Oh, oh no, which means her power is gone. Yeah, losing about the last 15, 20 seconds of her power there from that stun. And that can be a lot. Yeah, these survivors have a lot of resources, though. That's just one... I think... Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that the first power we've seen thrown? I think uh, it is. I think it is, yes. Yeah, this is not looking good here for the plague. This is going to be second hook here on the Zarita, though. So survivors do have something going for them. However, oh, I'm sorry, the killer no is really going for them. That's one person close to death hook. Yeah. But I imagine these survivors are all split up on gens right now. And yeah, they are going to pick up their power again. So survivors have not cleansed yet. That is the second power they've gotten. We might see a situation where the survivors don't bother cleansing. They may be content to let the survivor die. Yeah, look how far this gen oh. is. They may be content to let the survivor die on hook and just take the three out. Yeah, but she's leaving. She's going far enough away that I think she's kind of baiting them to go for that. Oh, no, we did see a pallet yeah, throne, because there's no there, pallet yeah. there. Well, it's because you saw two survivors. If you see two survivors there, you've got a chance for snowball. Yeah, and they're going to take it. This... I actually really like this play from the plague. You saw that there are two survivors in the gen right next to There's like, okay... I need more hook stages than this, and so you have to play more yeah. aggressively. You can't afford to camp it out because yeah. that gem was about to pop with two of them on it. You know that there's a third survivor out there somewhere. Take your chances. They got four stacks in that phobia. Dry kicking there does feel oh, you pop oh. it right there to stop the regression. And we did see Deadlock just pop yep. on that one as well. A little bit of an attempt there. Yeah, they're going to be hugging the side of that carnival van there. And Which survivor is... Oh, it's Nia. She hasn't been hooked yet. Nia. This is a fresh... Yeah. Oh, the dead heart! Wow. That was such nice good timing. Stayed, yeah. Oh, no. Um, Zarina might actually be coming in there on purpose. Like, if you can give them a hook and then give them a free hook, like, they're dead, but you don't give the, survivor, the, the killer a hook state there. Not the worst idea. Yeah, and there's that. They do finish that last gen there. So they do have two slugs. No way out proccing, but it's only going to have two stacks here. They may be looking at a 2K, potentially. Which honestly, if you get a two, if you get six stage two K as these survivors, I would take that. Yeah, this is what we're gonna see here. Is they're gonna go for this hook and they will just camp it out. Yep. Well, oh, the survivors no. are oh. cleansing. They're thinking about it. I, I mean, who has the borrow time? It depends on who's got the borrow time. Depends on if you can get that exit gate going. Mm -hmm. I believe Ace had the borrow time the last time. They cleansed far enough away that it's probably not a great plan to go for your purge, but she's going to. That's not the furthest one. I I, I understand the temptation. 
these exit gates are actually viewable from this area too this is gonna be spicy yeah it is. no matter how ah. this ends this is gonna be spicy ace was creeping over to that door which i think she saw right she Probably. had to yeah you see the scratch marks over there that's lori no but ace was going to the other oh, one, the other one. Oh, yep. oh okay he was very yeah. visible i'm yeah i'm very confused i do not think you go for the save here i think they're gonna take the out we might be wrong though if there's a deliverance place somewhere along here i'm going to be shocked we have not seen it yet all right so but i do believe nia just hit second stage so uh she's about to here in a second yeah there we go there's a the second stage they could they're gonna get it if he's got borrowed they can all get out because she does not have her corrupt a body or block she's coming in from the yes. knee too trying to get this ace injured with bomb because that's your only chance to get me down yeah there you Whoa. go you do get uh down on nia i don't yeah it depends do they have decisive or do they have borrowed time or not they borrowed must. Time? actually they if they must. have decisive they'll make it out yeah they must because otherwise why wouldn't they have had the lorry come in for a body block at the end that's such a good point i didn't think about that they have to have ds and i think that's what the killer thinks too i can't begin to fathom i i have to look uh, i have to look i have to know do you have decisive yeah you do yeah she she gets out she, she either has, crawls out she has 15 seconds 10 seconds unless, unless she misses her skill check do we miss the skill check no we do and not we don't oh wow wow six wow. stage three wow. out wow. from wow. the survivors they played that so tight Purge did not come to mess around today. No, they didn't. They put their game faces on and they are just going for it, man. Holy moly. Wow, what a... <sighs> Unknowingly hooking that Nia was the worst survivor to have hooked. I am so happy to see Guardian. You never see this. Guardian. By guardian, do you mean babysitter? That's actually so incredibly insane. That was wild. Yeah, because you don't yes, leave, like, you, you know that they're going to be infected. You leave the blood and scratch marks. That's actually kind of nuts. That's actually a really good perk against Plague. I never thought about it. Receive resilience makes sense because you're counting thanatophobia. Yeah, survivors played that super well. Oh, my word. That was clean, fam. That really, well, no, it wasn't. It was Plague. It's dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. I'm sorry, I had well. to. <laughs> but speaking oh, of man. plague and, and things that are dirty, I have some oh. some. I have a mini. I have I have, I have a small quiz for for chat with and you uh, about oh. plague. Some because plague is a really interesting killer. Plague has some very 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 unique lore. Uh, True. Different. There are a couple of things that set her apart from uh, the rest of the killers in the bunch. So, first of all. Can anyone, can anyone in chat name any unique characteristics of Plague in relation to her lore? I... Can you, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be able to begin, I don't think. I, I am very lore light when it comes to this game. In fact, chat regularly makes fun of me of the fact that I don't know some of Trickster's lore half the time. I'm just I, that I bad. Am, I am also very lore light. Um... However, I know a little bit more about Plague because she is very, very cool and very unique. Uh, so one of the, uh, because we're on delay, this is very weird. But oh. one of, so I feel as though I've given the, I feel as though I've given Chad enough time to respond and I will see their responses in like a minute and a half. Um, <laughs> it's a one minute delay. So one, one of the unique things about Plague is that she is the oldest killer in Dead by Daylight. She is as in age wise or from the oldest age? Uh from the oldest age. Okay, so she's like super probably, prehistoric. Yeah, because okay. she is from like an ancient civilization. Um so yeah, hmm. she is is she's not prehistoric, but I mean she's from an ancient civilization. So we're you know, you're thinking like ancient hmm. Greece, ancient Rome. Hmm. Uh, yada yada yada. She's like the oldest killer in the game, I think. Someone says. Yeah. Yeah. All right. She's yep. from the Kiki oldest age, Giraffe right? Coming in here. Hey. Hey. Cookie chat coming yep. in here. Yep. Look at y'all. Yes, she is All tall. Right. So whoa, well, Leo. She's very tall. Uh, does anybody know? 
uh, that she is missing a body part? And if so, which one and why? Did you know she was missing a body part? A hand. No. Really? She Yeah, she got both her hands. Um, I didn't think she was missing a foot. I mean, it doesn't look like her... Hmm. I don't know. I, I haven't a clue. She is missing a toe. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So that's why they have the... the okay. They, they, they have an add-on with the toe on it. Okay. So she, she is missing a toe because... Her, uh, she was like a priestess and mm. her, her, I don't want, it's like not town, but like her people mm. started to become very sick uh, with a, a plague. Mm. Shocking, right? Right. Uh, and one of them got very sick. And so she cut off her own toe as a sacrifice to try and appease the gods. Oh, uh, interesting. To save that, that individual. Okay. Uh, hmm. Which is very cool. I did not know and that. Uh, Roxanne did. Roxanne knew. Hey, we got some knowers in chat. They know the deep lore. They do know. Someone said ear or liver. They do know the deep lore. That would explain the sickness. (laughs) Yes, it would. I say you said ancient. I was like, so they're like they went all Puma Punka vibes or something. She's like Babylonian. Oh. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's what ancient Babylonian. That's pretty cool. I dig that. That's a, and that's a uh, cool the other really unique thing about her is that she is arguably the only killer that is not truly evil in the game. Uh, she left her town mm. because she had um, become infected with this plague and she didn't want anyone else to get sick. So she banished herself. Ah, so she is like the only killer that was a truly selfless individual and is is working for the entity, but probably not of her own free will. Hmm. I did not know that. That is uh that is interesting. Yeah. So Mags I wants to know if new. cutting off her toe worked. Uh I'm not <laughs> sure that I'm not sure that it did, but it did make her quite popular amongst people because they saw how uh reverent she was and how devoted she was to her people. So they began to call her the High Priestess of Babylon. Interesting. Oh. So, yeah, she is a very, very uh, unique killer. Yeah, that's and, actually really uh, cool. I had no idea. What? She's also, yeah, like, super of- heckin' tall and terrifying. She's, she is. Yeah, she but is. she was super, I mean, she's super beautiful. She was known as just mm-hmm. this tall beauty of a priestess. And, uh, yeah. She's, I, I just love her lore in particular. I think it is... I think it is really unique, and uh, it's very cool to see someone who is who is a killer, but not of their own volition. I think that's a very interesting concept. Yeah, that is actually pretty cool. So, on topic, but off topic at the same time, whenever I see Plague, I think Floor Jansen. That name may or may not ring a bell, depending on how uh, into Finnish metal you are. <laughs> it does not Say ring a bell. Say the name again. Uh, Floor Jansen. Or Jansen, depending on how you pronounce it. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> T. Banish. T. Sorry. Sorry! Uh, they are the third lead singer for a uh, uh, relatively well-known band named Nightwish. She is oh, Nightwish. six yeah, yeah, yeah. foot I know Nightwish. four. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Damn. And even crazier, she wears platformers. So she is like an extra know- five inches tall. She is a terrifying stage presence. Do you know that? Do you know that sound on TikTok? The mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry. She is the definition <laughs> of that sound. <laughs> Damn. Oh, she's okay. a she's a badass. Yeah, she's cool. Um, Flora Jansen, Survivor win. Nobody, would, nobody would play that. her though because everybody's bringing fangs because she has like the sm- super small hitbox. <laughs> Flora yeah. would be as small as the killer running around. It would, it They'd would be, be like, like what running. Is going on? There's two she'd killers like in the, the game. She'd be like the Jeff. Yeah, there you Don't go. Be a lot of Jeffs running around. Yeah, because one, he's like essentially uh, worth noting. Also, the plague was very different because again, Jane came during the plague time. That was when they were both added. Survivors got loud when Jane came out. 
every almost every survivor since Jane came out has been a very loud survivor. Do you know who Jane came out with? I thought it was Plague. The Plague. That's, yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what. I was, yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's oh. what I was picking up. Yeah. Essentially, Jeff and <laughs> Jeff and Jane are super loud. And but. we have the same two add-ons here being yep. run by this killer. I guess it's just a far cry that we'll see anything other than devotees in Apple. And I get it. So I actually figured out the other day why it's the yellow, not the green. They don't want to give survivors an extra pool to choose from. Oh. Yeah, I did not realize that was a thing. Oh. They're going Infected straight for English. the jugular. Gonna take that hit right away. I think we are gonna see a very different style of gameplay mm. from this killer, which is really kind of the best part about seeing these mirror matches. Are they is gonna how do up? how okay. do each of these people how do each killer play this killer differently? Like how do our competitors what about their style is gonna be different? Uh, and you saw her going for the M1 immediately. I mean it's probably using them waiting for it to be uh for them to be infected, and it was a free M1. That's the natophobia value. Yeah, and they do get infected now. So that was an extra 5% for her and probably an extra 20 seconds that they wouldn't have had otherwise. So maybe a bit of min-maxing on the killer's part. They're looking for somebody, though. Don't know if they're going to find who is on this generator, though. Worth noting, again, survivors are well aware at this point there is the natophobia. Just, uh, they haven't really found anybody since then. They've got their corrupt still up, so they've really got to try and make you. Oh, but they're back on this Adam. They are. Yep. I actually heard Adam coughing when she was outside. Ooh, good dead hard. Make some distance by dropping that pallet early. I think that's yep. the right choice here. Now Into the TNL. They... Yeah, it really depends on how they play this TNL here. They could move to the next tile. This is this is what Father Campbell's Chapel is so good about is that if you don't zone them properly as the killer. You can just W to the next tile and faking the window vaults. Ooh, getting close. We do see Bloodlust come in here. They might be able to go for the Bloodlust play. Yeah, they're going to run right to that next tile. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can just get to that next tile. It's so frustrating on this map. And we do see that first gen pop. So Adam is wasting her time a little. Yeah, and zoning her out to the shack. It is worth noting, despite the fact that... We didn't mention this. Purge is up by... What is that? That is... I think they were up 19 points going into this trial. It's like survivors can technically win this, but you have to give this killer virtually no hook states. Yeah. And I don't know if the servers are going to be able to do that. That's a tall order against a plague. See Lori over here as well. They're probably going to go ahead and take this uh, chase and just try and get an infection here. I think that's good dodge. Probably very sensible. That was very nicely played by the Lori. Oh, and she takes that M1. Good job forcing the M1. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be a matter of how many hook states can these survivors manage to give up. Oh, they do get infected at the last second there. They are, this killer is doing a great job of anticipating what the mm -hmm. survivors are gonna be doing. They're trying very hard to get the center gen done as mm -hmm. one does. Either that or they're using it as bait, which is working very well. Oh, good fake there from the Adam. Oh, that was I, a hard wow. respect by our killer. Ooh. Not going to work the second time, though. So this will result in a first hook for this uh, killer. I think they can only give... Uh, I think if they give three fresh hooks, I think that is enough to make sure that they can't come back. And yeah, they're going to go straight for this drink up. Yeah, actually, all you have to do is uh, camp this. They're not going to camp it, though. So this is where things are going to get spicy. Quite so. I wonder what Jen... Oh, Lori did cleanse, though. We didn't see a single cleanse last match, so... Uh, not until the oh, end. Oh, wait, no, we saw... Not until the end. We saw one, so this is going to be interesting. It will be, and I think Ace might be going down here. They don't go snow dead hard. Yeah, and they go down under oh. this pallet. Interesting drink up time. Maybe it was more of a, a ploy. Maybe. Than anything. And we do see that second gen popping. It's a bit of a risk reward, because if the survivors don't cleanse, you might not get you know, any more pools, but if they do, oh! They're gonna drink up again. Okay, they might be going for the camp here. They may have calculated that if they get one hook and then camp someone else out, they may be able to hold it. And that might be the player. No, they can't get the vomit throw here. If they play it correctly, oh, barely oh, missing it. Just did a good missed. job. Good dog That was from these survivors. really well done. Yeah, you can vomit through the survivor on hook. 
Wait, Betting you can? Room. Yeah. Oh, God, that's good to know. Yeah, uh, you, so, uh, unhooking against this killer when they have their power is incredibly unsafe. Ooh, good mind game from the quad at reading where this killer was going to be. Also worth noting, if you uh, if you vomit straight in the air when you're running backwards Ooh. like that, your vomit really doesn't go anywhere. It is actually based on your uh, speed. Balance landing, possibly? Yeah. No, no balance oh, landing. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh! The bags for the dodge. Wow. Well, they get pallet clean. save. No pallet save, and no. another cleanse as well. Third hook coming in for this killer. Third gen being done as well, so they are tit for tat, but I think they may three have done fresh enough. hooks are enough. We will have to well, see. On the one hand, if that's the case, we might see some spicy endgame gameplay, because if they know they've got it, mm -hmm. just just do it. Don't think about points and go, go hard, man. Oh, oh yeah, sprint burst. Oh, okay. Some spicy bags from the Claude. Generator has a decent, decent bit of uh, progress too, and there was a survivor over here, but they are no longer here. They did dodge. Going for the long wall vault here. Notice the area that they are cleansing in is an area where there's already gens done, so very safe for them to double cleanse over there. And that might be the case too. They might have read like, hey, we've got two spots to cleanse over here. Let's go ahead and reset some health states and play a little bit safer. Yeah, they've got like one gen kind of close by and they're not even trying to go for it. They don't, our killer doesn't have an excellent three gen here is something that I'm noticing though. True. So I'm not sure how much end game pressure she'll be able to put on them necessarily. Ah, uh, this actually isn't a horrible three gen scenario. The gens are actually kind of tight, but yeah, one of them has already had a lot of progress on it. I'm wondering if there's a latent decisive here. I don't know if it's been 60 seconds. That would have been a long it 60 seconds. Yeah, I about to say, it has not been 60 seconds, I guess, as they do finish a gen. Also worth noting, Lori is now fully infected. True, and we see that gen in center is deadlocked, so they got another 30-ish seconds before that gen will probably get completed. It's almost done. Question is, do they have a different one going as well? I imagine they do, but it depends on how much progress it has done. I imagine they got another one, but... Oh, <laughs> wow. In without wow. the borrow wow. time body block. Wow. <laughs> okay. That was just. Yeah, they'd have another one ready to go, actually. That was quite funny. <laughs> did wow. not see them coming in there. But she did lead them over here. No way out. Triggering with three stacks. I'm wondering if they're going to try and. Maybe there's a decisive on this Claudette. I'm not sure. I wonder. I wonder if she got her power, so if she does the pickup and gets DS, she thinks she might have a better shot at, at getting her. Because that Claude is looking to be picked up. Yeah, she is. True, they are full cleansing here, but those are, they actually got one. Yeah, there's an unbreakable oh, oh. on this Claude here. The question is, uh, that was a sprint purpose to give them some distance. Not upstairs, it was downstairs. I don't know if they realized that. No, they lost the Claude. If they get oh, a four out here. I wonder here, if they're big, they're big braining. They do they're heading ace. for the door. Yeah, they're gonna go ahead and drink it, make sure they have 80 seconds of Corrupt Purge here. No pallet ever here anymore. Not doubling back though, I think the ace held forward. No, they're behind this rock somewhere. Also worth noting that the survivors uh, do know all four of their perks and no Ed's not one of them. This survivor's done a really good job. They don't, I don't think the survivor realized where this ace went. If they get a four out, they, I don't know the points exactly, but if they get a four out here, that could potentially tie, I don't know. Adam over here. I don't know if they're going to be able to stop this. Yeah, there's the hit there. All the survivors are over here, but I don't know if anybody gets out. If they make sure this survivor dies, I'm pretty sure it's lights out. But they're not going to commit to the... Oh, oh, oh. cheeky play jumping in the locker there. Flashlight save? No flashlight save. Yeah, I think getting this Claudette will make it... Uh, will make it impossible for them to come back. If, I'm curious to note if without this hook, they would have been able to get the tie. I'm very curious. It's going to be very close. Mm, that was a really excellent comeback by Divine because their survivors really had a big job to do mm -hmm. uh, in this match. And I, I am really impressed with how well they managed to play that. They did, yeah. I, for a second, I thought they might have gotten a four out. Yeah. I thought that they were going to get that four out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Divine Survivors did absolutely amazing there. They A complete reversal of the previous game we saw. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just really, really well played. And 
points are slowly coming in here. I will try and get a confirmation on these points. Wow. Gonna be a close match. I have to say, this pairing did not disappoint me in any way. No, we oh, were not at all. Absolutely. We were talking about before how we were all very excited to see Purge versus Divine, and mm -hmm. they all showed up. They really did. So I think it's kind of what we said going into set two here is that it, I believe that is going to be a set win for Divine, so they will be able to pull the set here. As Purge did win the previous trial, 16 to 14, but divine coming away with this one at 17 to 12 however i am waiting for a quick confirmation on points still i think that's all tallied yeah i believe that is the final score so it will be match point going to purge in a two to one victory so congratulations purge on your two to one and gg's wp to divine as that was absolutely the, the the match point doesn't show up but that was an incredibly close set of games gg's to all everybody played mm -hmm. really, really really well really absolutely. very well and they certainly put on a good show for chat am i right oh yes chat? absolutely very very good games but with that said that is one out of four games we have today so we've got three more coming up this is the final uh round of games for group b's bracket and I, we're kind of off to a pretty baller start and right after this i believe it's going to be what is it monarchy versus debt or is it uh no Monar i'm sorry uh, monarchy is coming up later mirage. monarchy versus radio so this is mirage versus deadheads coming up next i believe the monarchy game is also a bit important because monarchy again is the one that's tied i'm curious i think if they get their win monarchy might take the lead now over divine I'm really not sure how the points are going to shake it here. I'm going to have to ask someone offline, but regardless, that was super fun. And uh, we will be back in about, honestly, we're probably going to be back in about 10 minutes. We did not, uh, the, those grindy twins and play games actually added up. We're actually going to have probably the shortest break between now and the next session. But with that, you'll be seeing both of us again. Junica will be joining me again for this next set of uh, matches. And uh, with that said, Junica, where can we find you next if you go live? Besides you here. Can find us at, <laughs> <laughs> you can find us at twitch.tv slash Junico five nights a week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'd love to have you hop on over and say hello to us and see some entertaining gameplay. But perhaps, perhaps what's most noticeable is our patented dual screen system in which you get to watch both of us playing Dead by Daylight at the same time in the same match. If I'm doing something interesting, you, the screen is on me. If Junie is doing something interesting, the screen's on her. And if we're both just sitting on gens, you get to see both of us sitting on gens. Twice the fun. That's right. Or twice the information. I I, I, I vouch. It's really, really cool. And with that said, I've been your host, Little Rugard. You've been watching Champions of the Fog. And stay tuned. We've got another set of matches coming up. And I'm okay, I'm seeing real quick in chat that they said that Purge needed 2-1 to qualify. So... Ah, so they tied for qualifications because of this. Oh, that's what they're playing for. All right. Good stuff. All right. Good comeback then. And uh, we'll be back shortly. Sorry, I just had to mention that. I. That's awesome. See you in a bit.